Start strong, finish strong. Wolf is always scratching. Let's roll. Up at 3.45 a.m., cardio by 4.45 a.m., hitting the iron by 6.15 a.m., in my pickup truck by 7.15 a.m., heading to work, ready to get after it, ready to shoot. There's no substitute for hard work. I'm gonna make something out of myself and it's gonna be so good, it's bad. Instead of telling you what I think you should be doing or what, how you could be better or, I thought, well, let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, but then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. This idea and this notion that you could be anything you want, and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that, you've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm gonna tell you what's worked for me. So before, a big movie comes out before, back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I'd just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. We had no place to live. Uh, a lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. I would remember that, and it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand, holy the, the stuff I have around me right now. This is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid. I am here. I played for University of Miami, played for great teams. Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis, they were my teammates. They were balling. Warren Sapp was playing tight end at that time. I was starting defensive tackle. Yeah, they moved him over to D-line. And he looked at me, he's like, yo, dude, I'm gonna take your spot. And I said, you ain't taking my spot. He said, I'm gonna take your spot. I said, no, you ain't. We battled and he took my spot. <laughs> now you can imagine how that with me, because there goes my opportunity. He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me, it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL. Calgary Stampeders making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian. Now, I had to send that shit home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. I had no money. So I remember that. When I got cut from Canada, uh, my dad in his pickup truck came down 4 o'clock in the morning, picked me up at, at, in, in Miami from Tampa. We lived in a little apartment in Tampa. He drove down in his little pickup truck. To, to, to Miami to get me when I was cut from the CFL. And I thought, well, f the, I, I leave home like you guys left home. I'm ready to tackle the world, get after it, achieve my dreams and goals. Crushed by 22, 23 years old. I'm, now I gotta move back in with my mom and dad. I played on great teams though. Wait a second, this is not supposed to be my future. I'm supposed to be in the NFL right now. I'm supposed to be making a lot of coin and buying my parents shit, buying me shit, taking care of my wife, but it never happened. So I pulled out my wallet, I thought, well, let me see how much money I have. I opened it up, I had a five, a one, and change. And, well, at least I rounded up to seven bucks. But I thought, God, ain't this a bitch? I got seven bucks in my pocket. Where the f do I go now? What do I do? I can't go back to CFL. The point comes where you hear that voice, the big run's over. I'm like, you're done, right? So I heard that voice. So as coach was saying, man, I hold on to that. I'm telling you, I keep my back is up against this mother we laugh, we joke, we have a good time, but my back is still up against this mother I do not forget it. What this also helps me do, and again, it works for me, is at some point, you gotta be tired of not being number one. You have to be, and you gotta play angry, and I play angry. Now, I'm cool and calm with my approach, and when I step out on my field, which is a set, or, you know, like, there's some, and you're always gonna have haters, and haters are like, well, God damn, man, how many movies are you gonna make, or how much shit are you gonna do? Like, you do a lot of shit. I say, yes, it's my ambition. Of course, why not? I could do it. Yeah, I love what I do. And not only that, but in what world do we not work every day? 
my back is up against this thing, you know, and I, and I, and I started to play angry, by the way, and, and I, still, I still play angry. My last match, Brock Lesnar, transition and I realized if I had to be great at something, I wanted to be great in this world of Hollywood and movie making and producing and entertainment, I had to commit and like you guys have to commit. Obviously you commit to something, commit to the goal. So I quietly retired. Two years later I thought what did I do with my career because my movies were not doing well. I was written off. I was like, it was around 2006, 2007. I was like, I left, I pulled a Jim Brown. I left when I was on top, like number one in the wrestling business, and I left. It was a ballsy, gutsy, some call it stupid move, but I had to commit and I had to follow what was in my gut. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind, because it allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off, and you guys have worked your ass off. It allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. What it also does for me, and again, this, just, this is what works for me, like, my back is up against this mother Every day, it's against this wall. But it's up against this mother because it's what I believe in. And when my back is against this mother then there's nowhere to go. But that way, that's it. Doesn't mean you don't smile. Doesn't mean you don't laugh and joke, right? You're happy, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy. But when it comes to business, and when it comes to executing, it's up against this. And I gotta go that way. And I don't give a fuck who is in front of me. They're not gonna stop me. The key for me was, where does it start? What's the anchor? What's the anchor? So I could have all these ambitions, and you guys have all these ambitions, which is great. It's important. I'll play this role, you'll play that role. I'll execute this thing and it'll come out this summer. You guys will execute this thing during the summer, right? When it's time to really put in a lot more work. But the key with me is just always finding what the anchor is. And the anchor is getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day before anybody else and grounding my thought process is in the no one will outwork me. No one. I love and I respect you guys. You mother won't outwork me. All starts with this. Two hands, putting it to work. <clears throat> My last match in WWE, I'll share this with you guys too, is that, again, because there's a little bit of takeaway here from all this is I wrestled John Cena. And I went in, I think it was 2013, I went in WWE champion, and uh, we went in MetLife Stadium. We, we had a record-breaking attendance, which was amazing that night. We accomplished our goal. So I wrestled with John Cena, we had 45 minutes planned for the match. It's non-stop, go, right? So your conditioning is tested. And at that time, I, I wasn't full-time in WWE. I was just doing these spot matches where I, would, I was still shooting G.I. Joe, I think, or Pain and Gain at that time. Or, I, oh no, it was, um, it was Fast and Furious 6 in London. Had to travel in the ring, get all my ring work in, travel back to shoot uh, Fast and Furious, then back, WWE Raw, doing those shows, the big build up to WrestleMania against John. We get to MetLife Stadium, it's a big night, this is it, it's game night, right? It's, it's, it's championship night for me. 45 minute match planned out. There's no cut, there's no, all right, well let's pick it back up tomorrow, you know, it's go time, it's just like you guys in a game. At the 15 minute mark, bang! I feel something pop, I'm like, boom, what the f I'm laying there, and both of us are out. I said, oh, fuck, something's going on. And uh, I stick my hand, now there's 85,000 people, right? And we're just laid out like this. I kind of roll over, I stick my hand down in my trunks just to see, I want to make sure that there was no bones sticking out. So if there's no bones sticking out, what the fuck? something just happened. Referee comes over and he's like, Rock, you all right? I'm like, yeah, 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 I think I'm all right. I said, <laughs> I get up, I go to step, and I, I can't step. I can't do this. I have to use my leg like momentum. I gotta do that. So now in that moment, and you guys are gonna have these moments, you probably already had them already, where you're in the game and you're in the thick of things, and you gotta make a decision. What I gotta do? I'm gonna stay in the game, I committed to the team, I committed to my team, the entire roster, 
right? So I could tell the ref says, are you okay? And I have one moment. In this moment, it was a defining moment. I could either tell him, no, I'm done. He gives the signal, match is over. Or, let's keep going. We have this decision. And I said, no, let's keep going. I said, how much time is left? He's like, 32 minutes. I'm like, okay. Rest of the whole match, <clears throat> couldn't move. Doing everything like this. I'm getting scared because I'm thinking, man, well, what happens if I, if I, if I, pinch something or something like, you know, I don't know, your mind starts fucking with you in the moment. There's 85,000 people, your adrenaline's rushing. I'm thinking, man, what happens if I'm gonna lose my leg or some shit like this, if I've just done something to my artery? Final move of the match is his big finishing move. <clears throat> and I remember I'm getting up and I'm turning like this because I have to fall into him. He's gonna hit me with his big finisher. I remember turning into John and he says, and I remember thinking to myself, God, please don't let this be too bad. Just take care of me. Take care of me. Bang! I feel boom! And I don't know what the f just happened. Now luckily the match is over, he pins me, one, two, three. Comes in the back, I get to the back, I can't move. Now I'm getting a little nervous. Get on a jet, rushed home to my doctors down in Florida and uh, get an MRI, find out that I have completely torn my adductor, the top of my my adductor and my top of my quad off my pelvis. What I was proud of was to walk out on my own, but not only that, but in this moment where the odds are against you, people are watching, your team's depending on you, you either say, I'm done, or this whatever the is going on, it's temporary, and it may me up at some point down the road but I'm not gonna let this opportunity go by without giving it my all. As you guys know, there's nothing you can't accomplish. You're gonna go on, you're gonna become world champions. The key for me, what I think one of the keys is, remember where you came from, keep that shit in the front of your mind, and when shit goes bad and it goes sideways, a lot of shit does, you're getting booed out of the building, or you're coming through this injury, or people are you writing you off, oh, you guys ain't make it, you know, any of that. You gotta, you gotta keep it in here. You, and it really has to, it should drive you. It should, it works for me, it should drive you. You got all the talent in the world, it's all here. Really the two things I wanna say are, you gotta be the hardest workers in the room and don't f the opportunity up.